sail. We're in on week three of the artist way, and so far I've been very consistent with my morning pages, and it's been very nice. I've been talking about a lot of different things each day naturally based off of the events that happened in my life and the more I write about that event it kind of leads me to something more buried underneath. I'm giving more attention to the feelings I feel instead of like dismissing them straight away. I'm like kind of relearning being okay with feeling the feelings. A lot of my journaling pages are actually referring to my childhood so like a lot of memories are also popping back up recently. Sometimes I start my day a little bit later and instead of beating myself up for it, I've just decided that it doesn't really matter what time I start the day. I'll still start it as if it's early and on days I feel extra gross, I do a whole routine before I start working. Because if I feel bad already, I'll feel bad no matter what I'm doing, especially if I'm just sitting at my computer editing and doing admin work. Like our grief throughout the years. I was folding my laundry last night and I had an idea come to me and it's been so long since I've had an idea just kind of like spark up in my head. So I'm very excited. Like literally the morning pages, I who would have known? Who would have known they would have like cleared my head so much so that I have room for all of these ideas. The instant that I had the idea pop into my head, I ran to my drawing table and I drew little thumbnails and I think I'm going to paint them today. I kind of need to flush it out a little bit more. Um, I'm going to do the one with a flower with little girls chilling on it. It's just like, I guess the feeling that I get when I hang out with my friends. The hangouts just feel like so lovely and nice and comforting. I also did this like one of me like folding my laundry. I think it would be so cool to make like a series of paintings of like mundane little moments in life because that's exactly what I like to capture sometimes in my videos is just like everyday living, everyday life. That's for future plans. I'm not gonna work on that now, but I am gonna do the flower one. Anger is a great way for us to tell ourselves when we have been wronged or if something needs to be changed in our life or if a boundary needs to be set. And all the times that we're frustrated that we're not painting anything good and we just put our art aside or if someone did something like really shitty to you and we just also let that slide, it's us ignoring our own voice and what is trying to tell us. A lot of the times we might discount our answered dreams because we don't want to believe that we have opportunities open for us to begin chasing them and to fulfill our wants and it's that whole thing of like when you close one door, another one opens. When you put yourself into situations that relate to your goals, you're more likely to be able to see opportunities pop up. Like for me, I haven't seen too many opportunities to do nothing and idle around for ideas and thoughts to pop out because I'm busy my entire day with work and I fill my schedule with work. And when I do suddenly get ideas in my head on what I want to create next, I kind of swat them away and I don't listen to them because I'm scared that it'll take away time from deadlines that I've set for myself on other things. An example would be, for example, like I kind of want to get into like jewelry metalsmithing because I've been really obsessed with watching other people do it and people create such beautiful pieces. But by me never taking initiative to take that first class or buy that first tool, I will never be able to set myself up to experiencing it because all it is is an idea until I make it a reality. And sometimes just jumping in head first into something new is very scary. So it doesn't even have to be that crazy. Like for example, if you've always wanted to be, I don't know, a botanist, why don't you buy your first plant? Like it could literally be something super small, but just know that you're feeding your interests and you're furthering your curiosity. This this and this have been bothering me for a while. Like I've been wanting to paint it, but I keep forgetting. So I pulled out, I pulled out the paint, but the paint has separated. I don't even know what color it is anymore. Mix, 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 mix. Oh my gosh, it's like brown.
think I've built up a lot of shame throughout the years stemming from childhood as I would say we all do. Over the years, I've gotten really good at detaching out of it and letting things slide even though it's hurting me over and over again to the point where nothing really hurts me anymore because I just internalize it all and let it explode once in a while. And unknowingly, it kind of manifested into my new creativity and it makes me not want to start anything because even before starting a piece, I've already created a long list of reasons why I shouldn't be making it or what I feel like other people will think about it. Even though no one has ever said anything really negative about my work, but I feel like because I've internalized so much of the negativity from all aspects of my life, it just projects out also onto my creativity. And so in turn, morning pages have been so helpful because it is a very healthy and safe environment where you can write down all of this criticism, all of the feelings, your feelings, everything you want to write onto a paper physically and it kind of diffuses the feeling. Also, sometimes it's really nice to talk about it with a friend that you trust and it kind of feels like you're releasing it out into the world and just letting it go. I really like this quote from the chapter and it goes, The antidote for shame is self-love and self-praise. I did not tell myself it doesn't matter, but I did tell my artist self you will heal. Whether your next step in your creative journey is to be a painter, a writer, small business owner, ceramicist, the list goes on, it's nice to have a home for all of your work to be showcased in a nice and professional online space. Squarespace is my current go-to online portfolio for me to present all of my favorite illustrations. What I love so much is that you can always add on more and more pages as your creative endeavors shift into other forms. If one day you want to explore photography on top of your current work and you need a new page dedicated for that, it's as easy as clicking a few buttons to make it a reality with their many, many themes. When you're ready to take the next step in your craft, you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash applecheeks to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I've been in my neutral era lately. Some days I just want to dress in all neutrals. I get into like phases where I just want to rip out all the color on my walls and take off everything on my shelf and just make it all neutral. And then I have days where I just want the explosion of color. I'm going to work on this painting today. I left it like this. And I'm not really feeling the colors on this. I just, it feels very much, I don't know. I just, I don't like it. Like I might redo the colors of the background and make this part more of a yellowish green or try to like mute it out a little bit more by washing a thin layer of acrylic over it. But I can't complain too much because this is the most art that I've made so far where I'm like actually not being like too mad at myself for making. I'm just happy that I started this. Most of my pieces are also like a trust in a process kind of piece because most of my pieces look absolutely horrid for the majority of its early childhood. The same way that I guess all of us kind of were like in our tween stage. But then it will blossom into something much more beautiful. So I'm actually making this for next month's Patreon postcard which I'm releasing in two days so I haven't even ordered them yet I haven't even finished painting it yet and I also have to make the stickers so I'm a little bit on a time crunch that's what I get for being over ambitious but let's finish it I, I'm i feeling a little stuck with the color I want the flower to be. And I kind of wish that I did a little like color thumbnail before. But before I keep going, I think I'm gonna do that.
We're gonna go get my childhood snack because a book told me to. And I'm excited. I'm not really sure what I want to buy yet. I'm just gonna go and whatever triggers my inner child in a positive way, I'm gonna get it. I'll be honest, I already bought myself string cheese the other day when I went grocery shopping and it wasn't for this assignment. I just saw string cheese and I was like, that looks pretty delicious. <gasps> Someone pushed my mirror in. have been got. I got more than one thing. One of them is this tuna kit. Every time my mom gave me this tuna kit, I was so happy and um, yeah, I, I don't know, yeah. The next thing I got, um, I got a bag of celery and, and peanut, peanut, peanut butter. I visited a relative when I was, I think in high school, and she said that my favorite snack as a kid that she would give me was celery and peanut butter, and she like handed me a plate of celery and peanut butter. But when I was in high school, I guess I was too cool for it, and I didn't really eat too many. My friend brought waffles once to our hangout, and I was obsessed. Mmm, okay. Take a glob of peanut butter. Oh, that was a lot of fibers. And I think the main reason why I liked this one so much as a kid was because I liked the like crafty part of eating stuff like this. like. I also very much liked Lunchables because it was like a whole activity in a box almost. It wasn't just like a snack. Oh, instead of a mint, they now have eight crackers instead of six crackers. As a kid, I also really liked the spoons. I always thought spoons, especially the plastic ones, were so cool. Especially like those um, red bean treats and then it comes in a can. And on the top, there's a little a little spoon, like it can fold out, so it was originally folded in half, and then you can fold it out to make it a complete spoon. Do, 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 do. Mix it all together. It's not looking too appetizing right now. Let's see if I still like this. You can take a bite first if you want to, if not, I will. Mmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of week three is giving attention to your younger self and figuring out the things that they love doing. It's also about realizing which people around you nurture your well-being versus those that take you down with them. Also, it's about noticing bad habits that you want to get better at. I think after physically writing all of these different lists down, I started remembering things that I've totally forgotten, and I started becoming more aware of the things I truly love doing and tried to put more attention on doing those things in my daily life. Things like watching long Taiwanese dramas that I used to love watching with my parents, to favorite snacks, to just the feeling of sitting at a park on the grass and feeling the breeze, or having little moments of curiosity that I used to have growing up. But sometimes it's not always good things that you remember, you also tend to remember a lot of negative feelings that you've forgotten over time as well. It's 1.33, your girl is finished 
finally finished with the painting. I actually really like the way this turned out. I feel like it's like the perfect amount of looseness, but also like tightness of brush strokes. And I also painted the sides, so that means it's finished. I'm reunited with my phone. I didn't have it all day. And it felt kind of nice. It was like a little detox. And I did not miss it at all. I'm going off to USPS to drop off my orders. And then we're gonna go on an artist date. We're, we're gonna do it. We're going somewhere fun today too. Two things on this planet that confuse me more than anything, it's driving around in an airport and also driving around on the strip. Hey. Oh, I don't like a parking garage. Give me a spot please. Just one parking spot please. So I can go look at some art and not feel sad anymore, please. <gasps> Are you a spot? Is this a spot? Because this is the best spot ever. Is this a spot? I wanted to challenge myself to a bigger solo date this week because I felt like I had been playing it pretty safe by doing things that I'm comfortable with and do already. So I decided to visit the Fine Arts Gallery in the Bellagio and I have never gone to the strip by myself before so I was a little nervous. Artist date won't always be sparkly and fun and go as planned and this one definitely humbled me. I realized that like through this date, that I get very nervous visiting places with high volumes of people and loud noises. I know that I like gentler spaces and more solitude than anything. This date was more draining than healing for me and I did very much enjoy the gallery and the garden. It distracted me from the anxiety for a bit, but like after leaving those places, I started getting very anxious. Also, a little moment of synchronicity that I had in this week is that I have recently been loving the artist Judy Tualatiwa. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, but I love her work. She is who I aspire to be when I'm 80 years old, and I would just love to be a little old lady doing all of my fine art looking pieces and hanging out and having a great time. And I just so happened to stumble across one of her pieces in the show that I was at and I've always wanted to see her work in person and I don't think they had a list of artists on the Bellagio website so I had no idea what I was getting into and when I saw her piece it just kind of clicked like wow like this is actually happening and if i had never stepped out of my apartment to do this activity i would have never seen her art because they rotate the gallery every so often and when i got home she was doing a live stream on tiktok and it was really full circle and it felt kind of cool and i think the synchronicities are really what make the world go round like it just feels like little pockets of magic even though i don't really believe in magic but like you know what i mean like it feels good I learned something about myself on this little self-date. I get way too overstimulated on the strip alone. I think in general, I do get very anxious in very loud and crowded places. The gallery was super nice and I was so surprised to see like there's this artist that I found through TikTok. She makes these really beautiful pieces by 
putting piles of sand into like a kiln and baking it at a really high temperature so that they like melt together into these little lumps of different color glass pieces and then she like combines them all into like one big canvas yeah i'm gonna go home now <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna go home Overall, week three was very chill. I let myself do the things that I wanted to do and just let things flow naturally. And I've decided to make my experience on the Artist Way book a series on here. So go watch the first part if you haven't yet and stick around and subscribe if you want to see the next nine weeks. And yeah, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.